Melanie Trump is brave when she plays the host of Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe at Mar-a-Lago. Scandal-plagued President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump put on brave faces and even showed slight affection while hosting their Japanese counterparts, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, and his wife, Aki Abe, for dinner at Mar-a-Lago Resort in Palm Beach on Tuesday. The two couples appeared relaxed as they took a casual stroll across the lawn of President Trump's Florida resort. The American First Lady looked elegant as usual, sporting a $3,000 Carolina Herrera dress and high heels. Melania appeared unfazed by the headlines that have been swirling around her husband's alleged infidelity. The Trumps were seen holding hands as they led their friends from Japan across the lawn. The dinner date was happening as the news media reported that the president's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, has been the subject of a federal investigation. Authorities are taking particular interest in payments he made supposedly on Trump's behalf to two women with whom his boss had a sexual relationship. When seated at dinner, Melania Trump was seated next to the Japanese premier, while her husband, the president, sat next to Mrs. Abe. The president met the Japanese leader away from frigid Washington, D.C. where temperatures struggled to climb out of the 40s on Tuesday. Meanwhile, at Palm Beach, the high temperature for the day reached 80 degrees. By evening, it had cooled off to a pleasant 69 degrees Fahrenheit. Pleasantries aside, President Trump and Prime Minister Abe had some serious business to discuss during their planned two-day summit. Trump said on Tuesday that the United States has engaged in extremely high-level talks with North Korea and hinted they go all the way up to reclusive dictator Kim Jong-un. Asked by reporters this evening who the senior officials are and if he'd spoken directly to him, Trump said, yes. He rolled back the apparent confirmation that he talked to Kim a few minutes later in another encounter with press, creating confusion about what he'd meant. Well let's leave it a little bit short of that. Trump said of direct talks with Kim the second time around. But we have talks at the highest level, and it's going very well, but we'll see what happens. Trump was most likely referring to Mike Pompeo, the outgoing head of the Central Intelligence Agency who was nominated by the president to succeed at Rex Tillerson as Secretary of State. The Washington Post reported on Tuesday that Pompeo met secretly with Kim over the Easter holiday. After Trump's remarks sparked speculation about him meeting Kim, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders immediately sent out a statement clarifying that the talks were not with Kim himself. The president said the administration has had talks at the highest levels and added that they were not with him directly, she said. The president did not, however, tell reporters that the talks weren't with Kim, he merely said, let's leave it a little bit short of that. Earlier on Tuesday the president said a face-to-face -face meeting with Kim is still on track to take place in the next few weeks. Unless negotiations go off of the rails, Trump said the meeting will take place in late May or early June in one of five undisclosed locations he said are under consideration. We have had direct talks at very high levels, extremely high levels, with North Korea. I really believe there's a lot of goodwill, the U.S. president said, we'll see what happens. As I always say, because ultimately it's the end result that counts. Trump said Japan and the U.S. are locked and we are very unified when it comes to North Korea. He delivered the remarks after welcoming Abe to his Palm Beach property for an afternoon meeting that both he and the Japanese leader said yielded great progress on the trade and security issues at hand. On those two points, we actually successfully forged a mutual understanding, Abe said. So I'm very happy to see the outcome of our one-on-one -on -one discussion. An intimate meal with Mrs. Trump and Mrs. Abe will serve a capstone to expanded talks between the President and Prime Minister and their chief advisors this afternoon. They will pick up talks Wednesday and potentially play a round of golf. The summit will apex with a joint press conference. I am in Florida and looking forward to my meeting with Prime Minister Abe of Japan, working on trade and military security the president tweeted this morning.
Today's summit is the U.S. president's second time hosting Abe since he took office at the private club the Trump family continues to own and operate for profit. The ultra-wealthy president has bestowed only one other world leader, China's 11 Jinping, with a Mar-a-Lago invite. Many of the world's great leaders request to come to Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach. They like it. I like it. We're comfortable. Trump commented on Tuesday as he sat down for his first meeting with Abe. Many, many people want to be here. Many of the leaders want to be here. They request specifically. Trump signaled to Abe with a comment that he continues to hold the Japanese prime minister battling his own set of political scandals in high esteem. It's honor to have you in Florida with us. It's an honor to have you at Mar-a-Lago and an honor to have you in the United States. It's really something special, Trump told him. Abe and Trump had much to discuss since their last face-to-face -face meeting in November in Tokyo. Last month, Trump agreed to a date hunt with North Korea in exchange for a pledge from the, the communist regime that it would freeze its nuclear program. He also announced sweeping new tariffs on steel and aluminum. The Trump administration ultimately gave some countries an exemption, but Japan, which does not have a trade deal with the U.S., was not one of them. Japan would have benefited from a 12-nation pact that Trump's predecessor was pursuing with the help of Republicans in Congress. Trump bucked his party and the deal, however, and yanked the U.S. out last year on the assurance that he could engineer a better one. Eleven other nations inked an agreement without the U.S. in March, in a decision that suggested the U.S. was looking to join the pact as a counterweight to China. Trump last week directed his trade representative and his chief economic advisor to reopen the negotiations. Senior Trump administration officials said Tuesday that the purpose of the Abe visit, from the U.S. standpoint at least, is to get on the same page about North Korea. Larry Kudlow, the president's National Economic Council chairman, admitted there are also certain disagreements with respect to some of the trading issues that needed to be worked out, as well. We'll iron those out. Hopefully, he told reporters, the United States would probably like to see a free trade agreement come out at some point with Japan. At a briefing Friday, a senior administration official insisted the relationship between Abe and Trump is as good as it has ever been. The leaders have been in constant contact since the president accepted Kim's invitation to meet, the person insisted. The president has a great deal of respect for Prime Minister Abe's views on Northeast Asian security. He will certainly want to know what additional thoughts Prime Minister Abe has beyond those that he's already shared, the official added. Abe commended Trump on Tuesday for having the courage to meet with Kim. Still, he said he wanted to underscore the importance of achieving the complete, verifiable, and irreversible denuclearization, as well as the abandonment of missile programs of North Korea in their talks today. Trump said in a March 10 tweet that he had spoken to Abe and the Japanese was very enthusiastic about talks with North Korea. Also discussing opening up Japan to much better trade with the U.S. currently have a massive $100 billion trade deficit, not fair or sustainable, it will all work out, he optimistically said. After his first round of talks with Abe on Tuesday, Trump agreed that a good deal of progress on the military, trade in North Korea had already come about. Kim is scheduled to meet with South Korean President Moon Jae-in next Friday. A conversation with Trump is on track for late May or early June. I think there will be great respect paid by both parties and hopefully we'll be able to make a deal on the denuking of North Korea, Trump last week said, hopefully. It will be a relationship that's much different than it's been for many, many years. The White House said Friday as it reviewed the Abe summit that the Japanese PM had never asked Trump not to meet with Kim. I don't want to go into their private conversations, the U.S. official said, but Prime Minister Abe has very, very good ideas and advice that he'll be sharing. Abe rushed to New York after Trump's election becoming the first world leader to meet with the president in waiting. On the occasion of Trump's election, Abe gifted him with a gold golf driver in a nod to their shared love of the sport. In the symbol of the close friendship that he and Abe have developed, Trump made Tokyo the first stop on November trip to Asia. He and Abe bonded over burgers, a golf game and hats that the Japanese prime minister had made for the occasion said Donald and Shinzo, make alliance even greater. But since then, Trump has softened his approach toward Kim.
the 33-year-old tyrant he used to needle his little rocket mon. The U.S. is also yet to ink the trade deal with Japan that Abe has been pursing since Trump was elected. Abe's approval ratings at home have steadily eroded as he battles corruption allegations, and an announcement on trade would help him shore up support in Japan. Trump appeared open to a deal heading into the summit as he instructed his senior aides to see what could be done about the Trans-Pacific Partnership. He now believes that the United States would consider negotiating with TPP countries, either individually or as a group, if it's in the interest of American business and American workers, a senior official said Friday. So I think it's fair to say, and the president has said, that a deal would have to be very attractive from those standpoints for the U.S. to take another look at TPP. In a tweet on Thursday evening, President Trump said he was standing firm on the reasons he ditched the pact in the first place, though. Would only join TPP if the deal were substantially better than the deal offered to Prez, Obama, he said. We already have bilateral deals with six of the eleven nations in TPP, and are working to make a deal with the biggest of those nations, Japan, who has hit us hard on trade for years. Trump's chief economic advisor, Larry Kudlow told Fox and Friends Tuesday morning that the administration would go slow on TPP and report back to him. In the past Trump and Abe have used golf to bridge the divide. An hours long game wasn't originally on the schedule this time. Trump said Tuesday that he and Abe would try to sneak a game in, though, before the conclusion of the PM's visit. It's a working visit, and the focus is, really, on the discussion of those high priority issues that I mentioned. The senior official previewing the summit said of a golf game on Friday. Golf is not on the official schedule. The president said Tuesday afternoon that he and Abe would try to hit the links on Wednesday am after all. We're going to sneak out tomorrow morning and play a round of golf, if possible, and if we have the time, Trump said. Trump recalled his last golf game with Abe, in Tokyo they played alongside Japanese pro golfer Hideki Matsuyama. He is one of the top three or four golfers in the world, Trump said Tuesday, and I always thought I was okay at golf, but then I realized, we were not so good, he told Abe.